We're at the midpoint of the NFL season, of the 2020 season. So we got to discuss who is on track and who's on pace of winning these awards that they award every single year, such as Most Valuable Player, Offensive Rookie of the Year, Defensive Player of the Year, Comeback Player of the Year, Coach of the Year, and so many more. Let's start off with the most important, probably the one that everybody wants to know. Who is going to be the NFL MVP? And at this point, it's a no-brainer. It's Russell Wilson, quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks, on a different level. You know, you could talk about his stats, which we will right now. 26 passing touchdowns, 71.5% of his passes completed. Sounds pretty freaking awesome, doesn't it? Well, if you look at his uh, stats on pace, what he's on pace to put up for the 2020 season, 4,900 yards passing, 59 passing touchdowns, which would be an NFL record, and on pace for 12 interceptions, but that's not that bad if you put up 59 passing touchdowns. He's carrying his team, and he's doing a wonderful job with the Seattle Seahawks, keeping them in close games. Their defense, everybody knows if you're a fantasy football fan, start your offensive players against that defense. That defense is pretty weak. He is keeping the Seattle Seahawks in the game with a winning record, able to put up clutch touchdown after touchdown after touchdown. Russell Wilson is the most valuable player, and if you took him away from that that team, from that Seahawks team, no doubt in my mind they would have a losing record. So Russell Wilson, no doubt about it, is the NFL MVP. By the way, if you're chatting with us, and at any point you have any other uh, uh, opinion or any other honorable mentions or any other thoughts on who is going to be the winners of these awards, leave your comments down below. Interact with us because I have some honorable mentions. It could be Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is having a very good season. It could be Patrick Mahomes. Very good season as well, like he does every single year. It could be Derrick Henry. Not a lot of people are talking about him, but Derrick Henry is carrying the load for that Tennessee Titans offense and is complementing very well with Ryan Tannehill, who Tannehill, you know, he's doing a great job as well. But Derrick Henry is obviously the best player on that Titans team. So a lot of MVP candidates uh, this season. Moving on to another uh, award, the Offensive Player of the Year. Okay, so this is what I don't understand. I don't understand why whoever wins MVP, more than likely, most of the time, it's an offensive player. Why doesn't this player win the Offensive Player of the Year? If they're the most valuable player in the NFL out of offense and defense, doesn't that mean that they're the best offensive player? Somehow, someway, the NFL just doesn't reward the NFL MVP, the Offensive Player of the Year award as well. I mean, sometimes they do. I I believe Patrick Mahomes, if someone could fact fact check that for me, I believe Patrick Mahomes won the MVP award and the Offensive Player of the Year, but... uh, In my eyes, if MVP is Russell Wilson, it should be Russell Wilson, the Offensive Player of the Year. But if it's not, how the NFL likes to do the thing, give it to another offensive player, then let's just give it to Alvin Kamara, the second best offensive player in my eyes this season. If you want to talk about his stats right now, 55 receptions. Let me say that again. 55 receptions for the NFL season through seven games. For a running back, he's on pace to put up, ladies and gentlemen, 125 receptions for a running back. And that's numbers that's great for a wide receiver. But if you talk about a a running back having that, that's great and all. That's amazing. But on top of that, the work that he does on that ground, in the ground game, remarkable for the Saints. Seven total touchdowns so far and over 1,000 yards from scrimmage. So he's on pace of putting up 126 receptions, like we mentioned, 125, 126 in between there. Over 2,200 yards from scrimmage total, receiving and rushing. Alvin Kamara is on pace to have. And 16 total touchdowns. That sounds like video game numbers for me. So Alvin Kamara, absolutely the best player on that Saints team and the second offensive player in the NFL behind Russell Wilson, in my opinion. So, honorable mentions for this Offensive Player of the Year award. You could have Patrick Mahomes winning this award. You could have Aaron Rodgers, like we mentioned, with the MVP. You could have Derrick Henry, like we mentioned, with the MVP. Same thing. These people could be MVP candidates, 
but they're also Offensive Player of the Year candidates as well. So uh, Alvin Kamara would be our choice for Offensive Player of the Year. Defensive Player of the Year. A lot of names to talk about. There's a lot of players out there that are having some pretty good seasons. I'm going to go ahead and lean more so towards the side of the stats, towards the stat sheet, because it is a big margin between this player and other honorable mentions we're going to mention in just a bit. But Miles Garrett, defensive end for the Cleveland Browns. The reason I have him as a defensive player of the year is because, number one, nine sacks for the NFL season through eight games. Pretty good. He's on pace of getting 18 sacks for the whole year. He's a monster on that defensive line and has made an impact on the turnover game as well. Four forced fumbles for the Cleveland Browns. He's on pace of having eight forced fumbles for the 2020 season. Is that going to happen? Probably not. But if you want to play this game and play the pace game, eight forced fumbles, 18 sacks. He's on pace. Miles Garrett is. Honorable mentions that we have for uh, Defensive Player of the Year. TJ Watt is playing lights out for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the lifeline of that Pittsburgh Steelers defense. The best defense in the NFL without question. TJ Watt should be deserving of some Defensive Player of the Year votes. And as always, every single year, Aaron Donald. You cannot have a Defensive Player of the Year running without mentioning Aaron Donald's name, who's won that award multiple times in his dominant year after year. So leave your opinions. Do you believe that it should be Miles Garrett or... You know, I don't blame you if you were to say T.J. Watt. I had a hard time with this. I would have leaned. I, I leaned towards Miles Garrett, but I understand if you lean more so towards T.J. Watt. But leave your opinions uh, in the chat and, and interact with us. Next up, the rookies. You got Offensive Rookie of the Year and Defensive Rookie of the Year. Who is going to run away with these awards? You've got Joe Burrow playing lights out. You've got Justin Herbert doing a very good job as well. I'm going to give the Offensive Rookie of the Year to Justin Herbert. And here's why. The honorable mention is Joe Burrow, the Cincinnati Bengals. Great season. Doing a very good job. He's thrown 330 pass attempts so far this season at the halfway point. He's on pace of throwing for 700 passing attempts. So that, that that's remarkable. That's great. He passes the ball a lot. But the thing is, he's thrown 11 touchdowns in those 330 pass attempts. Meaning in 700 attempts, he's going to throw for 22 touchdowns. Whereas Justin Herbert has a lot less pass attempts because he has only played six games this season. Tyrod Taylor was a starter at the beginning of the year. Justin Herbert has much less pass attempts and has thrown for many more touchdowns on those pass attempts. So he's done much more with his passing attempts than Joe Burrow. And that's why I believe he should be Offensive Rookie of the Year. 18 passing touchdowns so far this season. Five interceptions thrown. 1,800 yards passing. Okay, that's great, right? He's not going to play a full 18-game schedule or a 16-game schedule. But if he were on pace of playing 16 games, he would have thrown for 48 touchdowns and 4,800 yards. Forget that th- breaking rookie records, which he's going to do. That's MVP numbers right there. 48 passing touchdowns on 4,800 passing yards. So Herbert, mm, remarkable. He's going to be a great player in the uh, NFL for years to come. That's why I have him winning the Offensive Rookie of the Year award. Defensive Rookie of the Year. I kind of went back and forth on this. There's three main players that I really want to talk about. Chase Young, I think, if I had to say what I believe is going to happen, I believe that Chase Young is going to win the NFL Defensive Rookie of the Year award. Just because if I know the NFL, if I know the voters, and if I know how their thinking is, I believe that they're going to vote the guy that has made an impact on the on the Washington football team. Don't get me wrong, he has but is also touted as a very good player, has been touted as a first-round talent, has been a top-five pick. They're going to pick Chase Young just because of the name value, just because of how great he's been playing. But if I had to pick someone that's a little bit more underrated and has a better better impact on their team, in my eyes, I believe, on that defense, you guys are probably going to laugh at me, 
but I believe that Antoine Winfield Jr., the defensive back of the Buccaneers, has a shot of winning the Defensive Rookie of the Year award. His stats, not that flashy, okay? Only one interception this season. But again, your eyes, they don't deceive you. The eye test will tell you that the Tampa Bay secondary, although it could use some help, the main bright spot for that team is their rookie that they drafted in the second round. Antoine Winfield Jr., the son of Antoine Winfield, who also played in the NFL with Antoine Winfield Jr.'s teammate, or against his teammate, Tom Brady. So Winfield Jr., only one interception this season, but I believe that the point the point is that he makes the bigger impact on his team and it helps the Buccaneers win some close games. That's the reason why he should be considered for the Defensive Rookie of the Year. The most recent example is that two-point conversion against the New York Giants that he had against uh, Monday night, or that he was defending against Deion Lewis. He was the main man and the main reason why the Giants did not tie that game and why it did not go into overtime because of Antoine Winfield Jr. and his defense. So I believe that he should be Defensive Rookie of the Year. Again, some honorable mentions. Chase Young is also in the running, so if he wins the, uh, the Rookie Award, it's not that big of a deal. Also, Patrick Queen... The rookie linebacker has 48 tackles for the Baltimore Ravens for that stout defense. It is a little bit underneath the radar, uh, the first round linebacker that they drafted this past season. Uh, could also be a candidate for that defensive rookie of the year award. So Patrick Queen, Chase Young, and Antoine Winfield Jr. are my choices. Got two more. We got coach of the year and comeback player of the year. Let's start with the coach of the year. Mike Tomlin is long overdue, long overdue for this award. At this point, having one of the best seasons, if not the best season of his career, Mike Tomlin, in my eyes, should be the coach of the year. 7-0 start to the season, long overdue, like I said. He deserved this award years and years ago. What Tomlin does is he adapts with the team that he has, and he's able to help his team pick up some victories. If you look at last season when they lost Ben Roethlisberger, you could have easily said that Tomlin and the Pittsburgh Steelers should have had a losing record in that season. But instead, he was able to play, uh, play to his players' strengths, was able to put in Mason Rudolph, Devlin Hodges, pick up some victories, and finish with an 8-8 eight and eight, eight, eight and eight record. So uh, he's never had a losing season in his career. Think about that. Has been the head coach of the Steelers, since 2008, has never had a losing season. Has been 8-8 eight and eight a couple of times, but that's the worst season that he's had. So one of the best coaches in the NFL has never won the Coach of the Year award. Mike Tomlin is long overdue for that. Some honorable mentions that we have. I only have one, really. Some honorable mention. Uh, an honorable mention for this uh, award. Brian Flores of the Miami Dolphins. Honorable mention. This guy turned this team around. And if you look at the past 16 games that he's played with the Dolphins, he has a 9-7 and record. So he's done a lot with the culture in Miami since Adam Gase left. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big thing to turn around when Adam Gase messes up your team. So Brian Flores has done a very good job. And it, this Dolphins team is 4-3. and three. They were going into the season thinking like, hey, this is going to be another rebuilding year. Let's give Tua some reps, give him some, uh, you know, adjusted to the NFL and, and the game speed and all that. But he's done a very good job with this offense, with Ryan Fitzpatrick for the first half of the season, with this defense playing like they are a very decent defense in the NFL, having some pretty good defensive backs and a pretty good front seven as well. So Brian Flores has done a very good job. Mike Tomlin and Brian Flores would be my candidates for the coach of the year. And the last one, the comeback player of the year. It's a feel-good story. Alex Smith of the Washington football team. Just because of the story that he has. And that's really it. Just because of the injury that he suffered in 2018 with his football career and being in doubt with his life hanging on the line. Alex Smith stepped up, recovered, surgery after surgery after surgery, infection after infection, was able to come back and come back onto the field and play a few snaps on top of that. So Smith, I, I believe he should be the comeback player of the year. And it's really because, uh, yeah, yeah, the story that he has is, is remarkable. Forget the stats that he puts up. Forget that 
you know, he may only play one, two, maybe three games this year. Toward maybe towards the tail end of the season, he might. Forget that. Okay, this isn't about putting up a lot of stats or, or you know, helping his team go, you know, pick up a few victories. It's about him and what he overcame so that he could continue his football career. Uh, the number one overall pick from 2005 is still playing in the NFL. Is defying the, the defying his age, defying the injuries, and he's still able to put up uh, or, or come back for his team and come back onto that field. That story is remarkable, yes, but also there's really not that many comeback player candidates out there. I mean, before the season started, a lot of people were talking about maybe Cam Newton being a candidate for this comeback player of the year award. I mean, the judging by the way that's turning out, two and five record and not throwing a touchdown in the last three games, uh, it, it's not looking like it's going to be Cam Newton. Maybe if he turns it around, maybe if he improves and somehow some way the Patriots have a shot of making the playoffs and he puts up some pretty good numbers then yeah maybe Cam Newton could be comeback player of the year but at this point I feel like that they're going to go the NFL voters at least are going to go with a feel-good story and they're going to go with Alex Smith which deservingly so he should be deserving that award not taking anything away from that 